I owe an apology. Not to Emil Pagliarulo. He's self-reportedly not watching videos or taking criticism. He's entirely disconnected from any discourse we've ever had about him. No, I owe an apology to Lawrence Schick. When The Elder Scrolls Online came out, the marketing materials went pretty hard on him being the lore master. And the general sentiment online, partly constructed by the company's own marketing, that it was his job to keep the lore consistent. As such, I made a large series of memes and snide remarks that I've now come to regret having made. Remember that video clip I played of Todd Howard in that Emil Pagliarulo video? Our designers are our writers? Um, what do you look for when considering a new writer? That's a tricky one. Actually, our designers are our writers. So obviously we look at writing samples. Um, you know, it's another thing where uh, most people who do video games tend to overwrite. We overwrite. Like, we, are, we write way too much stuff. Um, most people who play Fallout, I watch them play it. We wrote all this brilliant stuff. And they get to a guy and they're like, just jamming the button. Shut up, 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 Oh, that's who I kill. Thanks. So I think the trickiest thing to do is to write really short things. Just to get the information across. But our writer, we don't have anyone as a sole writer. They're also quest designers, level designers. So <clears throat> um, if you're looking for that kind of thing, we would look for, like, a quest designer. You really have to understand some programming language. We'd look for a quest, like, here's what the player does, here's what the characters say, that kind of stuff. Turns out, confirmed by ESO's lead developer, that the zone quests for the base game operated under the same design principles. The level designers and quest designers wrote the dialogue, which is why most of the quests in the base game were just plain bad. The writers were writing lore for the game, distilling the backstory and world details. The quest designers were taking that information and writing their own quests based on their understanding of what had been written. That's why in concept there are some amazing ideas. Despite being amazing ideas, they were executed horribly. And that's why writing feels all over the place. It's because dedicated writers were not working on them. When you look at the starting zones, such as the Daggerfall Covenant, they were the most boring generic MMO nonsense ever. With the exception of the Castlevania Lament of Innocence, I mean, <laughs> Rivenspire, the Daggerfall Covenant was the worst. Contrast that to the good characterization and connected plot lines of the Eldmary Dominion. Sure, some of their characters turned from scholar to dumb, depending on whatever the plot demanded them to say, but that's a problem the entire game has. My point is, the variety of quest designers did a lot of different content, and none of it had proper oversight by full-time writers. According to Lawrence Schick's own interviews, there wasn't good communication between the designers and the writers when the game was in development, and things slept through the cracks, which is why House Inderil of Morrowind was represented by a wolf when the game was initially released. That got fixed. Many other things got fixed, but the quests of the base game could not be fixed as they were designed and voice acted with a painstaking amount of man hours behind them. So all of the massive problems the base game has had in its storytelling couldn't be corrected and won't be corrected because of that bad communication during its formative years. Now you think a reasonable person would learn the lesson to not make snide remarks or memes anymore, but thankfully I'm quite unreasonable. So really, ZeniMax Online Studios management deserves my poking as a more organized studio would have produced better content, most likely. In fact, you can see that better content in reality. When they buckled down post-release in order to redeem their reputation, they did this by producing some of the best content the game has in four DLCs. Chief among them, Orsinium, which is the best content written in ESO and has perhaps the only relatable villain in the entire game. It was mind-boggling the way they could go from a well-written Orsinium 
to banking on nostalgia with the Morrowind chapter and doing it so incredibly poorly. I can't speak to the minds of the creative process that made it, but Satanine, to my cynical mind, oozes the power of marketing designed to milk pay pig Morrowind fans who want to go home again. By the way, if you are a Morrowind fan and you want to come home again in a multiplayer setting, check out Test 3 MP, a multiplayer fork of The Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind. Although public roleplay servers that act like MMOs do exist, I've had the most fun playing it in a small group of friends on a private server running on my machine, in which could best be described as simple cooperative play, or co-op for short. All right, so, um, Khan, tell us who you are, what you do. All right, I am the red guard over here in the heavy armor. I go in the front and take all the damage and try to keep everyone else alive and not being attacked. All right, well, I'm the Breton in the light armor. I am using a war hammer, but for the most part, I heal, and that's it. Just, just lots and lots of healing. So uh, I get behind allies and heal them. Uh, next up, we got uh, Dark Rider here. Yes, I am the medium off tank, uh, where I try to make sure to knock everyone on their ass so everyone can maul on them or wail on them to make so sure that they're dead. You're an unarmed person who was <laughs> who smacks every time you punch somebody, their stamina goes down. When their stamina hits zero, they fall down on the ground and are incapacitated. At which point, we can just you know kick them while they're down. Exactly. So uh, next, we got our wood elf. Who is he? I I shoot people with a bow, and I have upgraded my shirt now. Hey, John, are you alive? Yes, yes. Sorry about that. I yes, I am a dark elf, Telvani wizard. I shoot uh, my spells from a distance, and if I get into trouble, I fly away with my levitation. So back to ESO. After returning to Sedanin, we have Azura burst forth from a lady in the opening quest line, and that bothers me a lot more than it should. Don't get me wrong, the idea of using a false incarnate as the driving force of a Marwin prequel is genius. I love it. Brilliant setup. It's just the execution that's wrong. They ended up tying it into Vivek, losing his powers again. That's just incredibly bad. I find it difficult to believe that the same creative forces that worked on Arsinium worked on Morrowind. This, however, is, again, part of how the games industry has major attribution problems. We'll talk about that in another video. If we are to respect these creative works as art, then we need to know who all the artists were and what they worked on, what components they created in the overall product. It becomes very difficult to praise Orsinium and at the same time denounce Morrowind, the Morrowind chapter that is, because proper separations can't be made. It calls my thoughts on Arsinium into question as the human mind wants to rationalize exactly why one turned out well and the other turned out poorly. In this case, we can only look at the studio, ZeniMax Online Studios, like a primate looks at a monolith, alien and unknowable, at least until the cracks start showing up. Following up, Morrowind was the Clockwork City, a mixed bag. Devaith Fear was a breath of fresh air as a quest giver. Yes, he is more or less just a quest giver, but the person who wrote him understood what an ornery Telvani wizard should act like. The actual city itself felt very wrong. But some of the side quests were genuinely enjoyable. And that final discussion with Sothasil projected Paul Atreides from Children of Dune as the tortured divinity whose path was already planned out for him. A man who was trapped by his knowledge of the future. This content, however, was credited to Lehman Tuttle, not Schick. Tuttle was also credited with Merkmire which was very well done. Somerset almost fell off a cliff in terms of storytelling quality, however. So far, ESO has been following a trend. Bad chapter, better post-chapter DLC. Repeat. Regardless, I could find no trace of the principal writing style of Orsinium, Clockwork City, and Merkmire in the rest of ESO. Sure, some of the side quests got hits, but looking at the main quests of each subsequent chapter, that style vanished from the game in subsequent content. My point is the same problems that plague Bethesda Game Studios are at the root of what made ESO's base game bad. Lawrence Schick, someone I heckled in videos and live streams, turned out to be a great writer in a bad job one that couldn't properly leverage his talents. 
and I apologize for having made fun of him. He's worked on some of my favorite parts of Advanced Dungeons & Dragons 2.0 in the past, and since then has gone on to be the principal narrative designer for Baldur's Gate 3. I look forward to playing that game eventually. It's unfortunate that The Elder Scrolls Online really marketed him as a strong creative force in a way that would be broadly interpreted as it was his job to keep the game consistent with the lore, when in fact, he was a lore book writer detached from most of the design process. His job was to write for and justify what they created, not the other way around. And that's unfortunate because I believe if the company had done better by him, he would have done better by the game. What I'm saying is the overwhelming majority of Elder Scrolls Online storytelling is bad, but it's not his fault. It's a shame, too, because there are some really good parts of ESO. Even the worst part of ESO, Greymoor, had some great content in it. It's just a game that has never, ever been able to take on anything close to an idealized form. Now, I've hit the point where I no longer purchase chapters, and I play things a year or two later. I've got other MMO-styled content to fill my time in Final Fantasy XIV, among others. So while I may discuss ESO in the days to come, never expect me to cover the latest release of ESO content again until it's aged a bit. Since chapters are, make no mistake, single zone DLC charging expansion prices. A horrible value proposition. There are lots of positive things I can say about ESO, but they always have some kind of asterisk attached. And that's not good. On the other hand, my compliments to Lawrence Schick. I'm a fan. I can't wait to see what you do next. Thank you all for watching. I'll be rambling at you all again soon. But until then, I'll see y'all next time. Parasites are merely a symptom of a greater sickness in Faerun. The infected hear the voice of the Absolute and believe it to be a god. The Absolute is more dangerous than you can possibly conceive. It threatens all who live. It threatens the gods. The weave very fabric of the universe itself.